Hi everyone, this is Bobby. So let's continue with our confession scriptures and today we're going to do day three and the topic is authority. And the reading is Psalm 91 verses 13 and 14. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. All right. Um, so let's read 1 Peter 5, 8 to 9 and Revelations 12, 9, and then we'll come back and talk about Psalm 91. Okay, so in 1 Peter 5, 8 to 9, it says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him steadfast in the faith. Okay, and then Revelation 12, 9 says, So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth and his angels were cast out with him. All right, so the reason I wanted to include um, this passage from Peter and from Revelation is just to make uh, bring to light what lions and serpents, lions and cobras is representing in Psalm 91. Okay, so it says in verse 13, you shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent, you shall trample underfoot. Okay, well, it's probably obvious to most people that this is a representation of evil in this particular passage, that the lion and cobra are representations of evil. But I wanted to just bring that to light explicitly. And so when we look in 1 Peter 5, 8 to 9, it says, your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion. Okay, so we see the devil's being referred to as a lion in 1 Peter 5, 8 to 9. So we shall trample upon the devil who is like a lion. Amen. Okay, and then from Revelation, we see the uh, four names or titles of the devil. One is dragon, serpent, devil, and Satan. So dragon, serpent, devil, and Satan. So he is a serpent, right? And in Psalm 91, it says, You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra. And the cobra is just a variety of serpent. The young lion and the serpent, you shall trample underfoot. Okay, so it should be extremely clear that when it says we're trampling upon lions and serpents, lions and cobras, that really we're trampling upon the devil, his demons, his works, etc. Amen? Okay, and whenever the Bible is referring to putting your foot upon something, okay, so God has given us authority, and when you exert your authority, it's as if you're putting your foot upon someone or putting your foot upon the devil or putting your foot upon a problem. You know, whatever you put your foot upon, you are above, it is beneath, and you are subjecting it to your will. Okay, that is an exertion of authority. If you have authority over the devil, you put your foot upon him. If you have authority over the devil, you trample him under your feet. In other words, you destroy his works. You crush what it is that he's trying to do. Amen? So that's exactly what this passage is talking about. And there's so many passages related to authority, um, but we should not be tread and trampled upon by the devil if we're born again. You know, we have been rescued out of the devil's kingdom. We have been rescued out of the kingdom of darkness. We have been rescued out from under the devil's authority when our sins were washed away by the blood of Jesus. So when we're born again, the tables are turned on the devil. So when we are born again, our sin is washed away. And because of that washing, of sin, the devil has nothing in us. And it is that sin that's present in a person that gives the devil legal authority over them. And when your sin is washed away, the devil has no legal authority over you. And so that means that we are no longer under his authority, but now we're in the authority of Christ. And once we awaken to the authority that God has given to us, then the devil is afraid of us because we crush him, we defeat him, we destroy his works. Instead of him treading and trampling upon us as unborn again people, or instead of him treading and trampling upon us as ignorant, um, meaning not knowing Christians, not knowing our authority Christians, um, once we come out of that naivety, once we come out of that ignorance of not knowing what belongs to us, and once we come out of you know, not being born again, but being under the devil's rule and reign, once we come out of that and are born again and awaken to our God-given authority, then we are the devil's nightmare. <laughs> Amen? We are the devil's nightmare because we tread upon him, we trample him, we crush him, we destroy him, 
And, and that's why there's scriptures that say, now thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ. And there's scriptures that say that we are more than conquerors through Christ who loves us. And there are scriptures that say that we are overcomers. We are um, victorious ones. Amen. And on and on and on. Well, how does that all come to pass? Well, one of the major ways it comes to pass is because God has given us authority over the devil, over all of his power, and over all of his works. Amen? Okay, well, how does how does authority work? Well, first of all, we need to have faith. We need to know that we have authority. So when we know that God has given us authority, that is that is an aspect of faith, right? So, if, you know, I guess before that would be we need to have faith in God. We need to become born again by believing in Jesus and confessing him as Lord. So that's a first exercise of faith. Then we need to arise and learn what are the works of the devil? What are the works of God? What is the will of the devil? And what is the will of God? So we need to be able to, dis to discern the will of God versus the will of devil. That's another aspect of faith. Okay, and then... We need to learn how to operate in faith, and we want to operate in faith by exercising authority, by commanding situations, commanding devils, commanding diseases, whatever that's in our way, we command it in the name of Jesus, and that's an exertion of authority. Amen? So it's as simple as that. All right, so let's make this into a confession. So again, my normal habit would be I'll read a passage out loud. We've already done that. Then I may do a couple of things with it. Um, definitely you want to proclaim it in first person, you know, declaring it as true for you. Then you want to say it back to God as a thank you. Sometimes I'll say it by putting my name in there. You know, so there's different things you can do with the passages. You can even confess them, emphasizing a different word each time you confess it, and then you'll draw out more meaning from the passage. And um, before I get into that, I did want to mention verse 14 has nothing to do with authority. But I wanted to include it just because I like verse 14. It says, because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. Okay, so I always like to remind myself and remind others about the protection of God. And Psalm 91 is all about physical salvation. It's about protection. It's about authority. It's about immunity to, from, immunity, um, to disease, immunity from evil, immunity from curse. I mean, it's like all-out protection plan and physical salvation. And I just you know, had to include this passage here. So do we meet the criteria to have the protection of God upon us? Well, if you love God, then yes. Because, okay, so here's the enabling factor. <clears throat> Excuse me. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. That's a promise. I will set him on high. And this um, set on high, it's actually one word, and it's, it's a verb that means to seat on high in a place of safety out of reach of the enemy. That is rock solid. Amen? That's amazing. So, you know, when we love God, when we're in a loving relationship with him, when we trust in him, then he promises. It's a guarantee. He will deliver us. Boom! Rock solid. He will set us on high in a place of safety out of reach of the evil one. So the devil, you know, he's jumping up and down. He wants to get to us. But we're way up here and he's way down here. And guess what? You know, he's beneath our feet. So we can tread upon him. We can trample him, but he can't get to us. So we just need to come into a relationship with God. We need to love God. We need to know his goodwill. We need to believe his goodwill. We need to confess his goodwill. And we need to operate as sons of God by exerting our authority. Amen. So, so anyway, I just put verse 14 in there just because I like protection. And there it is. All right, well, Jesus and Father and Holy Spirit, I love you, and I thank you that you have made me into a son of God. Thank you for making me into a brother of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for being bold and courageous and loving and coming to this earth to give us salvation, to give us an amazing salvation for this present life and an eternal life salvation. Thank you, Jesus. And thank you that you have given me all authority in heaven and on earth, the authority of Christ you have shared with me. So I declare right now, I declare in Jesus' name, I tread upon all evil. I tread the devil and all the workers of the devil. I tread and trample them under my feet in Jesus' name. I tread down, trample, and destroy all sickness and disease in the name of Jesus. 
I tread and trample cancer under my feet in the name of Jesus. I tread and trample upon COVID under my feet in the name of Jesus. I tread down and trample the cabal under my feet in the name of Jesus. I tread down and trample tyranny, dictatorship, communism. I crush these under my feet in the name of Jesus for all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to Jesus Christ. I am in Christ and I am seated in heavenly places in a position of authority far above all principalities, powers, mights, and dominions and every name that is named. Therefore, I tread down, I trample, I crush, I destroy the devil, all of his demons, and all of the works of the devil I crush under my feet, in the name of Jesus, and upon my exertion of a word of a command, the power of God flows, and the works of the devil are destroyed, and the devil himself is bound and can no longer continue his evil work against me or whomever I'm ministering to, and so be it in Jesus' name. Amen. So Jesus, thank you. Thank you that you have saved me. Thank you, Father, that you have put me into Christ. Thank you that you have Put me into Christ, therefore I am the body of Christ. Therefore, thank you that I partake in the authority of Christ, which is all authority in heaven and on earth. Thank you that you have seated me on high in a place of authority above the devil, above all of his kingdom, above all of his works. Thank you that you have given me the authority of Christ with which I tread down, trample, crush, and destroy all the works of the devil. Thank you that you have given me the authority to bind the devil and his works. Thank you that you have given me the authority to set free those who are oppressed. Thank you for giving me, thank you for making me a son of God. Thank you for giving me the authority of Christ. Thank you for giving me the Holy Spirit. Thank you for giving me the miraculous power of God with the Holy Spirit. And thank you that upon my exertion of a word of a command, a word of authority, thank you that your power flows and resolves the situation. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you, Jesus, and thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, so at this point, all you want to do is you probably have some situations in life that need to be dealt with. Surely our country has issues that need to be dealt with. All the world has some you know, global and countrywide issues that need to be dealt with, so we should exert authority against those big problems. We should also exert authority against whatever more individual type things are going on. Maybe there's things in your personal life. Maybe somebody's sick. Maybe there's something going on in the workplace. Maybe there's somebody with poverty. You know, so when you do this confession, whatever challenges are at hand in your life right now that or or pe or challenges of people that you're ministering to, plug those things in there. You know, like maybe there's people in your life that are dealing with poverty. Well, you Poverty is a work of the devil. Stick poverty in here. I declare in the name of Jesus, I have received the authority of Jesus Christ. Therefore, I tread down and trample poverty under my feet in the name of Jesus. I trample lack under my feet in the name of Jesus. I destroy poverty. I destroy homelessness. I destroy hunger. I crush them under my feet in the name of Jesus. And by the power and authority of God given to me, I exert a word of command and I bring forth provision to those with need. I bring forth housing to those with need. I bring forth food and money and jobs and I bring forth fulfillment of whatever the needs of the people are upon my word of command in the name of Jesus. It is done. Amen. You know, so whatever whatever you're dealing with, whether there's sick people, whether there's poverty, whether there's, uh, I don't know, turmoil in relationships, whatever the situations are, stick those things in here and as specific things, confess it. And then when you're finished with that, then go ahead and pray for those situations, exerting your authority. Amen. And just watch what happens. All right. Well, God bless you. That's all for today. And talk to you soon.